Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about lexicology and word building. In this presentation, we will find the following questions. The first one is, what's lexicology in the English language? And what study of lexical meaning? And why do we need lexicology? And what are types, rules and examples of word building? Do you know these questions? If you want to obtain full answer to these questions, watch video with Joycely. Hopefully, you will learn essential and fundamental knowledge. And I suppose that it would be intriguing, exhilarating and crucial for listeners and learners. So, let's begin. The first thing I would like to say about lexicology. As we know, Lexicology is a branch of linguistics, the science of a language. The term lexicology is composed of the Greek more famous lexis, word, phrase and logos, which denotes learning. And lexicology is concerned with words, variable word groups, phraseological units and more famous, which make up a word. And lexicology studies a word and different aspects, the patterns of semantic relationship of words, as also their phonological, morphological, and contextual behavior. The basic task of lexicology is a study and systematic description of the vocabulary in respect to its origin, development, and current use. In lexicology, the word and the vocabulary of a language is studied as a system. It's true that lexicology as a branch of linguistics has its own aims and methods of scientific research, of lexical system, on the ways and tendencies of vocabulary development. And there are five types of lexicology. And the first one is general, special, descriptive, historical, comparative. And general lexicology is concerned with general study of words and the vocabulary respective of the specific features of any particular language. It investigates linguistic phenomena and properties common to all languages which are generally referred to as language universals. Special lexicology deals with the words of definite language. For example, and the English lexicology, Russian lexicology, Uzbek lexicology, and so on and descriptive lexicology studies the words at synchronic aspect. It's concerned with the vocabulary of a language as they exist at the present time. And historical or diachronic lexicology deals with the development of the vocabulary and the changes it has undergone. For example, in descriptive lexicology, the words to take, to adopt, are considered as being English, not differing from such native words as child, food, stone, and others. But in historical lexicology, they are treated as borrowed words. The next one is comparative lexicology. It deals with the properties of the vocabulary of two or more languages. In comparative lexicology, the main characteristic features of the words of two or more languages are compared. For example, Russian English lexicology, English French lexicology, and so on. And it's known that lexicology is closely connected with other aspects of the language. 
grammar, phonetics and stylistics. And phonetics investigates the phonetic structure of a language and which is mainly concerned with the functioning of phonetic units and studies the sound form of the word. Its system of phonemes and intonation patterns. And grammar is study of grammatical structure, of grammatical system of a language. Its concern it was various meaning of expressing grammatical relations between words as well as with patterns after which words are combined into word groups and sentences. The next one is stylistics. And stylistic studies the nature, functions and structure of stylistic devices and it's concerned with the research of each style of language with its aim, its structure, its characteristic features. And there are lexical units, the main unit of lexical system of a language, resulting from the association of a group of sounds with the meaning is a word. And the word is a speech unit used for the purposes of human communication, representing a group of sounds and the structural types of English words. And uh, they are simple words. For example, simple words consist of one root morpheme and inflection. For example, seldom, chairs, longer, dog, cart, and many others. And derived words. And it consists of one root morpheme and one or several affixes and inflection. For example, acceptable, unemployed, desirable. And compound words. It consists of two or more root morphemes and inflection. For example, newcomer, bookstores, and so many others. And the next one is compound derived words. It consists of two or more root morphemes and one or more affixes and inflection, such as babysitters, middle of the roaders, job hopper. And furthermore, there are two approaches to the study of the vocabulary of a language, diachronic and synchronic. And synchronic approach deals with the vocabulary as it exists at a given time, at the present time. The diaronic approach studies the changes in the course time. For example, synchronically the words help, accept, work, produce are all of them English words, but diachronically they came from different languages, such words as childhood, kingdom, freedom, and were at one time compound words, because the suffixes dom, hood, sheep were independent words, but synchronically they are derived words, because dom and hood and sheep became suffixes. And besides, lexicology has some subdivisions such as semantics. It's the meaning of words and sense relations. The next one is word structure. The types of more famous and the word formation. It studies all possible ways of the form formation of new words in English. Etymology, it studies the origin of words. Phraseology, the sad expression, phraseological units. Now I will explain about morphemes. And what is morpheme? The morpheme is the smallest meaningful language unit which consists of a class of variants, allomorphs, 
which are either phonologically or morphologically conditioned. For example, please, pleasant, pleasure, and more famous are divided into two large groups and lexical or written morphemes and grammatical morphemes. And both lexical and grammatical morphemes can be free and bound. And free lexical morphemes has lexical meaning of the word. They coincide with the theme of the simple words. For example, dog, book, room, house. They are consist of noun, verb, adjective, adverb. And bound lexical more famous are suffixes, prefix, and this disabled, un, unnatural, and suffixes ish, girlish, and ship, friendship. And they are consist of pronoun, preposition, conjunction, and oracle. And well, let me talk about word building. And word building refers to the ways in which new words are formed on the basis of other words or morphemes. And word formation divided into two ways. The first one is reductive ways. And they are a section, compounding, conversion, shortening or abbreviation. And the second one is non-productive ways, and uh, they are sound interchange and reduplication, sound imitation or anamatopoeia words, and blindness or blinding, big formation and borrowings. And uh, if I can say about a fifth section, a fixation, a fixation is one of the most productive ways of word building and affixation is divided into suffixation and prefixation and if I can say about suffixation is the main function of suffixes in modern English is to form one part of speech from another and the secondary function is to change the lexical meaning of the same part of speech and uh, for example educate is a verb education is a noun and uh, if i can say origin of suffixes and that they are native and uh, borrowed suffixes for example air teacher worker fool cheerful careful less sleepless useless and many others. And uh, furthermore, and absent, able, comfortable, and your career, and so on. And uh, perfection is the formation of words by means of adding a prefix to the stem. And prefixes are more independent than suffixes. And prefixes can be classified according to the nature of words, in which words and prefixes use it and uh, functional words. And the uh, origin of prefixes and uh, such as un, undressed, over, overcome, and over time, and uh, underwear, and uh, underwater, and so many others. And uh, Moreover, in inhuman, de decentralized, ex exchange, and many others. And uh, compounding. And the compounding combine two or more free morphemes to form new words. According to the part of speech, compounds are subdivided into nouns. For example, baby moon, sunflower, fire engine, wallpaper, bookcase, and textbook, and adjectives. Adjectives such as greenhouse, poor happy, blue sky, and many others. And verbs. Verbs such as to honeymoon, and 
to babysit and to kill joy, to jump sweet and uh, adverbs such as down deep, head first and preposition such as after thought, outpatient and many others. And the next one is conviction. Conviction, this is a change of the function of the word. For example, when a noun comes to be used as a verb, such as to hand, hand, face to face, bake to bake, and many others. Shortening. Shortening and abbreviation and is a shortened form of a word or phrase. And they are graphical abbreviation and lexical abbreviation and or acronyms. And the graphical abbreviations are the result of shortening of words and word groups only in written speech. In the graphical abbreviation, words are shortened into the groups of them. Days of the week, man, Monday, Fry, Friday, and names of the months, sub September, Jan, January, and names of countries in the UK, United Kingdom, and USA, United States of America, and Ala, Alabama, Alas, Alaska, and names of addresses, and Mr., Mrs., Doctor, and many others. And the initial abbreviations or acronyms, the formation of a word from initial letters of a word combination. And for example, CD, compact disc read only memory, and NHS, and the, the National Health Service, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, and the UNESCO. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, NATO, and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, TOEFL, Test of English as a Foreign Language, and leaks collaborations, the part of the words is clipped, and according to the part of the word that's cut off an issue middle or final. Dra, different types of shortenings. Expo, exposition, exam, examination, advert, advertisement, com, computer, phone, telephone, copter, helicopter, nate, internet, and others. The next one is reduplication. And reduplication is full of frame or fame Sometimes with variation. In full duplication words, so so, bye bye, yo yo, and uh, with variation words, zigzag, dilly dally, hodgepodge, mishmash. And uh, the next one is back formation. And back formation formed by dropping the final morphing to form a new word. It's opposite to suffixion. That's why it's called back formation. Such as to collocate from collocation, to compete from computer, to emote from emotion, to edit from editor, to donate from donation, and many others. And the sound imitation or anamatopoeia words. It's a very interesting topic, and it's surprising that it's formed by imitating different sounds. And the uh, sounds produced by human beings to whisper, to giggle, to mumble, to sneeze, to whistle, and sounds produced by animals, birds, and insects. For example, Dog, dogs bark, cows moo, frogs croak croak croak, cats meow, and ducks quack quack quack, and bee buzz, and the sound is produced by nature and objects, and to splash, to rustle, to
to clatter, to bubble, to ding dong, to tinkle. And the next one is blends or blendings. And blendings are words formed from a word groups or two synonyms. And one of the first blends in English was the word smoke from two synonyms. And smoke and fog, which means smoke mixed with fog. Do you know? It's very interesting, yes? And blends are formed by one of the following methods. At the beginning of the word is added to the end of the other. And uh, such as the word brunch. Brunch is combined from two words, breakfast and lunch. And at the beginning of two words are combined and the new word, chocolate. And chocolate is combined from two words, chicken and literature. And the word motel. Motel is a blend of motor and hotel. The word new cast is combined from two words, news and broadcast. And the next one is etymology of the English words. And etymology is a study of the origin of words and how their form and meaning have changed over time. And the English vocabulary consists of eight words and 30%. And borrowed words and 70%. And borrowings enter the language in two ways oral speech and written speech. And borrowings may be direct and indirect through another language. The indirect way towards philosophy, phenomenon, and method music were borrowed into English from Latin and had earlier come into Latin from Greek. By then the European elements are meant words of roots common to all or most languages of the Indo-European group. English words of this group denote elementary concepts without which no human communication would be possible. The following classification was given by Arakin. According to classification and the family relation, father, mother, brother, son, daughter, and parts of human body, food, nose, lip, heart, and animals, cow, goose, and plants, tree and corn, and time of day, day and night, and the uh, numerous adjectives, read, new, glad, sad, the pronouns, personal and demonstrate pronouns, and many others. And the uh, borrowings in the English language are taken over from another language and modified in sounding, spelling, and prodigium or meaning according to the standards of the English language. Some names of fruits and vegetables came from Latin words such as cherry, pear, plum, pea, and pepper, and there were numerous scientific and artistic terms, lime, the tomb, and phenomenon, philosophy, method, and music. Additionally, Norman French borrowings, administrative words such as state, government, parliament, council, power, empire, and legal words and judge, crime, prison, and uh, they have uh, military terms, army, soldier, and battle, enemy, and educational terms, people, lesson, library, science, pen, pencil. And the uh, everyday life things were also borrowed from French in this period. And uh, such as table, plate, saucer, dinner, supper, river, autumn, uncle, 
and many others. Furthermore, borrowings from other languages, for example, Spanish borrowings, and they are tomato, tobacco, chocolate, and, uh, and German borrowings, dog, landscape, and coconut, and uh, Irish borrowings, and the whiskey, phony, trousers, and Japanese borrowings, sushi, kimono, tsunami, and Russian, they are Sputnik, and Arabic, Muslim, orange, and sofa, and dero. And the next one is Italian borrowings, and the violin, opera, piano, and zetto. And in conclusion, in my opinion, that is, lexicology is a study of words and their meanings. And the while word formation is the process of creating new words or forming existing words in different ways. And both areas are important for understanding language and how it evolves over time. Besides, this lexicology helps us understand the structure and meaning of words, including their origin, semantic relationships, and usage in different contexts. It examines various aspects such as etymology, morpholo morphology, and semantic to provide a comprehensive understanding of words. And Furthermore, for formation, on the other hand, focuses on how new words are created, are formed by combining and different elements or altering existing words. This process involves various and the uh, section, adding prefix or suffixes, compounding, combining two or more words, borrowing and adapting words from other languages and blending, combining parts of to existing words and many more. And uh, by studying lexicology and word formation, linguistics can gain insights into the structure and development of languages. They can analyze patterns in word formation processes across different languages or track changes in word meanings over time and observe how language adapts to societal needs. And moreover, understanding lexicology and word formation can help individuals improve their vocabulary skills and recognizing word patterns and identifying the meanings of unfamiliar words based on their components. It also aids in language learning by providing insights into how new vocabulary is created in a given language. In a nutshell, in my opinion, lexicology and word formation are essential brands of linguistics that contribute to our understanding of a language structure and meaning and evolution. They play a crucial role in studying a language from both scientific perspective and practical applications, such as language teaching and translation. Okay, that's all, and my presentation is over. If you liked my video, wait for next videos and the next presentation will be more interesting and useful for you. See you next time. Have a nice day. Bye.